Um, Bismillah, well, the, the first thing I think it's important to, uh, we, we talk about the terms like faith and, and often don't define them, and faith obviously has dictionary meanings. One of them is just belief without any proof. And there's a lot of people that that's how they view faith. In fact, a lot of skeptics and secularists think the people of faith are simply they just have no proof and they're believing and it's irrational. Mm -hmm. But there's also reasonable faith. And I think most of our traditions actually are founded in reasonable faith. Everybody this morning got up with reasonable faith that they were going to make it to the Congress Center. We got on airplanes with reasonable faith that that pilot knew what he was doing, that Boeing knew what they were doing when they put it together. Mm -hmm. Basically, everything we're doing is faithful. I mean, we have immense faith. We had faith in our teachers when they told us mm -hmm. that uh, 5 times 5 is 25. We have faith in uh, how Schwab that uh, he's a good organizer and this thing's all going to work out. So faith is just part of life. Reasonable faith, you know, there's a lot of unreasonable people. It's probably wise maybe to ask your spouse where you fare on that. Um, but uh, faith is just part of life and, and how we uh, bring faith into a type of reasonableness. Yes. In terms of healing the world, the world has always been fractured. Uh, the Jewish tradition has tikkun olam, which is the idea of healing a fractured world. Um, in the Islamic tradition, there's a verse in the Quran that says, do not corrupt the earth after we have made it whole for you. So, so humans have the capacity to actually create an immense amount of fraction. Now, fracture is interesting because we, we have a mathematical term, fraction. And if we want to add fractions, we have to find common denominators and bring those. Uh, that, that's the way we bring things together. So, and, and also to reduce to get things down, a kind of Occam's razor, down to what are the fundamental problems on the planet? Mm -hmm. And if I was going to identify the fundamental problem, I would say it's arrogance. Mm -hmm. You know, human beings need to learn humility mm -hmm. uh, towards one another. And then I, I totally agree with uh, His Eminence, uh, the, the Cardinal, that family is at the root of it. And families are dysfunctional. Part of the reason why we have dysfunctional families is to learn how to live with people we don't agree with, right? I mean, everybody has the uncle that nobody wants to come to the holiday, but he still comes, and we kind of deal with it. And so that's part of just learning to live together. We are a human family, mm -hmm. and, and having contempt for others is a major problem. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, in conclusion, our, our, our prophet said, uh, none of you will enter paradise until you have faith. And he said, but you will not have faith until you love one another. Mm -hmm. He said, can I tell you something that if you practice it, you will come to love one another? And then he said, spread peace. <sighs> you know, I, I would say that the, the human being is, is, we're a triune creature. Um, we, we, we have a, a, a reptilian stem in evolutionary psychology. It's, it's at the base. It's survival fear, instincts, and then we have this midbrain, which we share with dogs, have emotions. We've got dogs in America on Prozac um, because they get depressed <laughs> in families that are kind of depressing. Um, and, and then we have this neocortex, which, which is riding over these two. Now, in, in, in a traditional scheme, like Plato would have said, the whole purpose is for that rational brain to control the irascible, the concupiscent, these lower cells. Mm -hmm. And if we look at this triune self, you know, human beings do basically three things. We know things, we do things, and we make things. And this, this was the understanding. One of the things C.S. Lewis said that, that he, he, he lamented the loss of a holistic view of the world that the ancients had. Mm -hmm. the, the moderns have become fragmented because we fragmented knowing, doing, and making. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's why we were meant to know the truth, we were meant to do the good, and we were meant to make the beautiful. Mm -hmm. you know, to, 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 and, and this is, is a holistic way of viewing the world. Um, I don't think you can get a better definition than for happiness, which is what ultimately people apparently are all looking for. Mm -hmm. Happiness is, is the soul's conformity. It's, it's the soul's activity and conformity with virtue. Mm -hmm. So all of our religious traditions are calling us to be virtuous. Last night we had an exercise where everybody was told to imagine the person most uh, influencing in their lives, and then imagine a quality that defined that person. There were probably about 100 people in the room, maybe. Every single one of them gave a virtue, mm -hmm. right? 
That, that, that was what they saw. They didn't say, oh, he went to Harvard and had a uh, 4.0 degree, or he made a billion dollars, or he invented a, a rocket that got us to Mars. It, it, was, it was compassion, humility, mm -hmm. equanimity, uh, love, wisdom. These, these are the things that really all of our societies have cultivated. And I think one of the things, we're the first human society that exploits the seven cardinal sins. Mm -hmm. You know, other societies really saw that you need to help people get over these things. You know, we obey your thirst, mm -hmm. you know, not control your thirst. Just do it, right? Within the institutions, and there, this is, uh, there are many, many institutions within Islam, but with, uh, from your own perspective, how is conflict dealt with well, within the institution? I mean, obviously not very well right now, <laughs> right? But uh, conflict, you know, the, the Quran talks up constantly about uh, reconciliation. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mandela was successful because of the truth and reconciliation, mm -hmm. the idea of bringing people together. Um, and and, and that, that is something I think that the Muslim world is grappling with. But when, when you look at the, the Muslim world today, what you're seeing is the absence of the practice of the principles of the Prophet. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing the practices. Mm -hmm. uh, the Quran constantly says, do not uh, go into sex to love one another, to treat people, and all of humanity. We have a, a famous tradition, I've got two ayatollahs in the room, but we have a famous tradition from Ali that said that all of humanity can be divided into two types, either your, your, your fellow in religion mm -hmm. or your peer in humanity. Mm. And, and uh, the great poet Hafiz said, um, how would you treat others if you realized that you were all invited by the Creator to a banquet and each one was a guest? Mm -hmm. How would you treat them? Mm -hmm. You know, what right do we have to oppress other people mm -hmm. right. or to denigrate or look down on other people? Mm -hmm. So institutions, uh, we need to learn from our religions. The Catholic institution has been incredible in, in uh, navigating uh, modernity in many ways. It's, it's, it's survived uh, intact for centuries. Um, Pascal reminded us that governments don't last, and history proves that. Uh, we, you know, we don't know how long these governments are going to last, but if history is any indication, they won't last forever. Mm -hmm. But he said the reason, but religions do last. The institution of religion lasts. And he said the reason for that is that the ground of politics is compromising principles, but the ground of religion mm -hmm. is principle. Mm. I think it's really important to point out that a lot of what we cherish about uh, modernity, about individual rights, the inalienable rights, human dignity, all these things, mm -hmm. these, these come out of uh, Christian Western civilization. I mean, this idea, in many ways, modernity is a, a Christian heresy, yeah. just simply because it removed God, but it retained a lot of the principles. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something modern Westerners tend to really forget, how much religion informed that. Mm -hmm. And then also the participation of religion in, look, credit unions were, were faith-based. They came out of a, a faith-based tradition in Germany and then in America and Canada. Mm -hmm. um, life insurance was a Catholic initiative to protect families that uh, suddenly lost a, a, a provider. Uh, the, the, the evangelicals were the ones that eliminated uh, the Atlantic slave trade. Mm -hmm. William Wilberforce in Parliament was entirely informed by his faith. Mm -hmm. So we forget all of these things. But mm -hmm. I would say one of the most important things about faith, I mean, I, as, as somebody who studied theology, I'm very committed to reasonable faith. But there's also satisfactory dogma. You know, there's this, there's this idea that people get a great deal out of faith. You know, Marx is often quoted saying religion is the opiate of the masses. Mm -hmm. But he didn't actually say that. It's a completely misinterpretation of what he said. Mm -hmm. What he said was, is that religion is a protest against an unjust world. Mm -hmm. That religion is the sigh of the oppressed. Mm -hmm. It's the heart of a heartless world. Mm -hmm. It's the soul of soulless conditions. Mm -hmm. It is the opiate. It's the opium of the people. Mm -hmm. In other words, it numbs the pain of living in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, we have replaced religion with real opium. We have an opium crisis in America because people have such a hard time dealing with religion. Now, I think if Marx was writing today, he prob probably would not have said religion is the opium of the masses. He would have said something like, 
um, Facebook is the heart of a heartless world, mm -hmm. um, that Netflix is the opium of the, of the mm -hmm. people, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're in a different type of, of world. But I think faith, we forget how much faith enables people yeah. to navigate. I mean, Buddhism, the first mm -hmm. truth of Buddhism is the world is suffering, right? right? And, and people forget that, that there is great suffering in the world, and religion has always been yeah. uh, a source of solace for people. So Marx's idea was, look, instead of having religion, let's just get rid of the suffering suffering in the world, which is a utopian idea that ended up killing millions of people. The Persians have a teaching story about a man who went to a doctor and he said, doctor, I touch here and I have all this pain. I touch here, I have all this pain. Here, I have all this pain. Mm -hmm. Everywhere there's pain, what's wrong with me? He examined me and he said, your finger's broken. <laughs> and, and some, t you know, the, the meaning behind that, obviously, is, is we need to identify the source of the pain and the suffering where it comes from. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of people, uh, don't know where their pain comes from. Melancholia can be uh, intrinsic. Yes. Uh, you know, there's exogenous, where your father dies and you have pain, mm -hmm. but there's also a, a type of inward pain and suffering. And, and in our tradition, we actually believe that, that, that that's part of the design, mm -hmm. and that pain is to drive you uh, to seek solace. Yes. And, and the only solace that you will find is in truth. Mm. And, and so it's... Um, you know, one of the, uh, the verses in the, well, the relationship of pain and knowledge is in the Arabic word, ilm and alam. They're actually cognates, so, so they're related to each other. Immense learning comes out of suffering, and we believe in redemptive suffering. The idea, there's two ways to look at the world, and both have a lot of evidence. One is that this is meaningless, randomless madness, and, and we'll all just do, you know, John Lennon said, whatever gets you through the night, mm -hmm. you know. And then the other is that it's meaningful and it's purposeful, and I have a meaning, and I as an individual have purpose, and I'm in a universe of purpose, mm -hmm. that each individual that comes into my life Life has a purpose and meaning. Those are two choices, and there's not enough time to sit around and debate about it. I, for me personally, I made my choice, um, but like I said, they both have arguments.